Specializer Bay S Works, size 52, SRAM red components on here. Oh, you do have a bottle cage on there, but it weighs in at 16 pounds, five ounces. 7.39 kilos. Uh, stay tuned for the Athos um, weight. And also after this, the Freya body test as well. 2021 Specialized Athos Pro, size 52. This is with the SRAM Force equipment on there. Revolve CL Alpinus wheels. Weighs in at 15 pounds, six ounces. 6.97 kilos. Uh, stay tuned to after the video to hear a free body sound test between the CLs and the CLX. Thank you guys. Hey, how's it going everyone? This is GC Performance here, back with another video. Uh, today we're gonna be discussing these two bikes right here. I have the Specialized Roubaix 2021 and also the Athos Pro uh, 2021. Kinda wanna show off the two bikes and show you um, the comparisons between the two and maybe which one is better for if you're deciding between the two of them. Uh, because when they released the Athos, it was kinda aimed more of a, a relaxed ride um, you know, more for a, not a racer guy. It's not UCI legal. So a lot of people have been asking me the question, should I go with the Athos or should I go with the Roubaix? And, uh, I want to kind of show off the differences between the two bikes. And I also going to measure I'm gonna show off. I got a tape measure right here to show off the difference of the head tube, the sizes of them, uh, maybe the stack on the, uh, steer as well. And we'll kind of get into all those. I know these two bikes aren't exactly the same spec in terms of components. The Athos Pro 2021 retails for 7,800. The Roubaix S Works goes for, uh, 2021 goes for 12,500. I'm not here to discuss the differences between the, the components. I know they're both different. I'm just here to show off the, the geometry, the sizing, and which bike I think is better for which consumer. So, pop right into the Roubaix. Uh, this is a 2021 S Works Roubaix. I believe this thing came in at 16 pounds, five ounces. Uh, this is a 52. They're both the same sizes as well. So that way I want to kind of get a, a even playing field. So this is a 52. The Athos is a 52. And this is a SRAM Red Grupo right here. And always with the Roubaix, the first thing you're gonna have to know with these bikes is that they're gonna come with a lower spec gearing. So if you're looking for something with a little bit more speed or maybe that you've always ridden a Roubaix before and you want a little bit more gear and you feel like it's not enough, um, the, the other bikes will always come with a little, a little bit bigger gearing. So on the Roubaix, they're always gonna come with a compact chain ring. So on here, it's a SRAM Red. It comes with a 46, 33 tooth in the front. And then in the back, they have a 1033 by SRAM Red. Uh, very nice wide gear range, but on South Florida, on those high end gears, you're definitely gonna be running out of gear range for the flats. But anywhere else in the world where you have some climbing, um, you're gonna be more than happy with that gear range and it might be a nice fit for you. But with the Roubaix, we'll go right up to the top here. What the Roubaix is known for is this Future Shock right here. This is the Future Shock 2.0. It is a hydraulic system. It's 20 millimeters of, of travel, of suspension. So when this thing is open, you have an open and closed knob right here. This will allow the shock to move and give you kind of that uh, relief from, let's say you live in a place with bumpier roads, harder roads, dirt roads, maybe even some light grass riding, who knows? Um, and you feel like you have hand numbness a lot. This will take away a lot of that vibration. I mean, it's literally like riding on a shock and air system. Um, it's completely beneficial and people will say well wouldn't that take away from your power no because this is completely separate from the bike so if you look at the bike there's nothing being involved to the bike except for this shock up here and this is above the bike so when you're sprinting when you're riding there is no flex on here at all uh, to the frame so you're not losing any power also you have the lockout knob up here so you can completely lock out this future shock if you want while on the go and it will lock out so this does not move if you want this to be stiff as possible for a sprint this lockout feature is only available on a Future Shock 2.0. So keep that in mind. I think the lower end Roubaix come with a 1.5 that does not have the lockout. It has a spring inside there. So keep that in mind. Also with these Roubaix, they're known for coming with the hover bar. Or if you really want to make your salesman happy, go into the store and say Hoover bar. It makes my day every single time I hear that. But it is a riser bar. You can see it's not flat. It comes up right here. I believe it's 15 millimeters of rise. So you're getting not only that, an extra 15 mils of rise on here as well. So. What the Roubaix does better than the Athos, it gives you a better geometry position right off the bat. Uh, it's known to be more upright. It's gonna give you a more comfortable position from the get-go. This is as low as this bar can go or low as this stem can go. You can't go below the future shock. There is an option to put three five millimeter spacers underneath this future shock. So if you were to remove this uh, stem and the future shock together, you can put three spacers underneath it right here to make this come up even higher. If you really want to get down and gritty to it and you want to make it as lower and you feel like this is too high when you buy the bike, you go always replace this stem, buy a different stem and put a negative 17 degree stem on there, a negative 12 degree stem on there, something that you can put on there to make it more uh, uh, aggressive if you like to. That's always an option for that. But 
that's what the Reveda does so much better than other bikes. It gets you in a more comfortable position right off the bat. Um, and that's something you're gonna have to figure out whether or not you wanna be riding for more comfort, maybe longer rides, uh, 100 mile rides, 150 mile rides, you know, it will be a, a more comfortable position for that right away. So I br did bring my tape measure. Again, this is a 52. Give me a second, guys. Work with me here. Uh, I'm gonna go here. Cool. And we're gonna go like this. So I just wanna measure the head tube. Again, these are both 52s. So go boom to the boom. And we're right about 110 millimeters. So 110 millimeters for the head tube. I just wanna measure the ethos so that way you guys have a point of reference. The ethos head tube is going to be looks like 120 millimeters. So the head tube on the Athos is going to be longer right at the bat. But remember on this Rubey, you do have this riser bar, which is 15 mils higher, which is huge. And also those three five millimeter spaces, which equivalents out to another 15 millimeters of spacer rise that you can get on there. So we'll make a big difference in there. Um, also with the Rubey coming with this through axle, you do have this, uh, the CLX uh, 32, I'm sorry. The Revolve CLX Alpinus wheels on here. It's actually new for this year, right? Yeah, the CLX Alpinus wheels. Um, this will come standard if you get the Pro or the S-Works, same with the Athos. So you're gonna get the same wheels, same components either way. Just remember that when you ever you get the Rubey, you're gonna get more of a compact gearing. Um, one more thing the Rubey does, they do have this little finish back here. This is a proprietary seat post. It's flat in the back. It's more like a D-shaped seat post for the uh, Rubey. You lift up this little rubber grommet the wedge is right here in the seat so this allows the seat to go back and forth and give you some movement so again if you're on some gravel roads if you're on something that has a little bit more of an uneven road you're going to get that comfort for that saddle it's going to be able to move uh also with the s-works rebay this bike is going to be more aero than the athos not just the s-works but every single rebay model uh, they actually designed this bike to be more aerodynamic than the sl6 so you're getting some aerodynamic benefits as well so recap rebay has a future shock uh, shorter head tube than the Athos, 15 millimeter rise hover bar, 15 millimeter rise spacers you can put on there, uh, a lockout for that future shock as well, but they're going to have a compact gearing always on the Rebay, so keep that in mind. Going to the Athos, who would want to buy the Athos on here? This is definitely more of a non-traditional proprietary bike. Uh, it's a bike that you can buy and ride this thing for a very long time. There's nothing proprietary about it, so finding parts would be very easy for it. 31.8 handlebar clamp regular inch and a steer, um, 27.2 seat post, threaded bottom bracket, nothing crazy about the bike at all. It's just insanely light and in the way they did the Carmen layup on this thing. Uh, benefit to the Athos is that you have a, a compact, I'm sorry, a mid compact chain ring. So this is a 4835. So you can see we're getting more aggressive gearing for the front chain ring. And then still a 1033 in the back, which you can see SRAM kind of follows suit. But in terms of Shimano, if this was both Shimano groups for an Athos and a Rebe, on the Athos, if this was Shimano, it would be a 5236. And on the Rebe, it would be a 5034. So that's what I mean by compact and subcompact. You're gonna get a little bit more gear with this bike. You're gonna have more higher end speeds. So let's say that you've been riding a, a older model Rebe and you're trying to decide which one you wanna go uh, and you want more speed and you've been doing a couple more group rides and you want that higher end stuff, maybe you might consider the Athos. Um, I've always, said that the Athos is kind of like a Rebay on steroids, and uh, I'll get into that. So, the Athos does not have a future shock, just a regular carbon steer. It does have a little bit more aggressive geometry. Uh, we found that out by doing the test on here. This is a little bit taller head tube. Again, these are both 52 centimeter bikes. Mm. This Athos weighs in at 15 pounds, six ounces. The Rebay weighs in at 16 pounds, five ounces. Keep that in mind that is an S-Works. This is a pro with pro force. These are very lightweight bikes, very lightweight, very fast, very fun bikes. I have a 56 Athos myself with the Altaker version. It's one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever rode in my life. So I'll got to give them to there. So again, 120 millimeters, but the stack on here, I wish we will go up to here, stem. Stem the stack height, we're at about an 83, we'll call it, just whatever. 83, we'll call it. We'll go back over here to this Rebay and just stock stack height on here. What about a, 
let's say like a 90 because I mean I'm not gonna go into a dip on there but you are getting higher stack on there alone minus the 15 millimeter space on here so you're gonna have a higher riding position on the bay always but on this Athos like I said it is incredibly light it reacts to power very easily so when you're putting down power on that bottom rack area the bike is insanely uh, efficient if that makes sense to put out power uh, but when I notice when riding it it's just not it, it's not a teeth chatter it doesn't beat you up when you're riding on roads even on even on bumpy roads I took it on from uh, sidewalk to grass back to street I mean the bike is just handled so smoothly it feels very comfortable underneath you and it doesn't give you a lot of like I said like that that jarring feeling like a Avenge would or a Tarmac SL7 would yes those bikes are insanely stiff they're race ready but this bike is so smooth but it pushes out power so efficiently that like it's, it's a weird feeling it's one of the weirdest bikes I've ever rode in my life in terms of that it's so light it's so fast but it just it doesn't beat you up when riding it the vertical compliancy of this bike what that means is the way it handles bumps taken from the ground up to your body it's so smooth i don't worry about hand numbness as much i don't have that as much as is i mean i usually i don't ride gloves but typically 45 minutes into a ride i might get a little normal hand numbness shake it out whatever but it doesn't beat you up uh the c post they put on here the the, the new alpinist c post the 27.2 carbon c post in here very smooth the carbon bars i gave you on this pro model very smooth now again i'm not comparing apples to oranges or anything like that or apples to apples because they're, they're two different models but the athos just handles so well so to wrap this up and sum up to what bikes i think that you should go with depending on uh which model is which um let's say that you had an older Roubaix, like uh, like an sl4 and sl or sl4 or the older sour bay and you're looking to get a little bit more aggressive um this bike is so comfortable yes it's a little bit more aggressive on geometry but i think that if you're looking to take a step up into uh going faster quicker on group rides of that I don't think you have an issue with those couple millimeters, you know, 10, 15 millimeters it is to be a little bit lower, uh, that you'll benefit with the higher gear range. You'll benefit with the bike being stiffer laterally, I think, uh, in terms of, you know, putting on power because of the way this frame is weaved and they, they do the carbon layup on this bike. It really does put out power really efficiently, but it's it's an enjoy to ride. You know, you don't, like I said, you don't feel beat up. I know it looks very thin. I know that everyone thinks that you'll resonate vibrations a lot more, but the bike is just super nice. Whereas this Roubaix, what I think this, this bike is for is someone who still enjoys those longer century rides. Someone who's looking to get out there, maybe not, maybe still do group rides, yes, because this bike is very fast, it's aerodynamic, it holds speed very well, but someone who rides more by themselves or maybe one or two riders who looks to go out and put in some miles, who, who has a goal of miles each week that they wanna go out. So I think that this bike will put you in a more comfortable position right away, and that might be beneficial to a lot more people. You have the features to this bike. You have the future shock on here that you can lock and lock out. You can double this as a gravel bike. You can do longer distances on it. Um, you can fit up to, I think, like a 33, 700 by 33 tire in here. I've seen people make this a full gravel bike with some, some teeth on there or some uh, extra tire tread. But the bike is absolutely a beast of a bike in terms of that. But a lot of people aren't too sure if they want the future shock or not. They don't know if they want the extra weight. This is heavy. This is a, there is a cartridge inside here. Uh, a lot of people don't know if they want to be that higher up position because you're only limited to, you know, a select few positions with that Future Shock Incorporated. So, the Athos is that bike that you wanted, that you, th you should think about getting if you're in an endurance bike already and you're thinking about taking that next step, but you don't want to go to a jarring, you know, Venge, a sprint bike, an aero bike. Uh, the Athos is that bike tenfold, a little bit less aerodynamic than the Roubaix, the newer model, but um, it's 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 a great bike, very comfortable. I can't say anything negative about these two bikes. I know I work for Specialized, it sounds really dumb saying that. But every single customer I sold, an Athos 2 and the Roubaix 2, they both loved it. The only time I had someone say anything bad about the Roubaix when he bought an S-Works Roubaix and it was the older style Roubaix and the Future Shock just came out, they did not have a lockout option on there. He did not like that because of the fact that when he said that he was going up to those faster speeds, he was a crit racer almost. So when the Future Shock first came out, he didn't like the Roubaix because it was felt so bouncy. They, you know, people, I'm sure, other people have said the same thing. They put the, the, the lockout on there. Now you have those options. But, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys, again. So, Roubaix, 52. 16 pounds, 5 ounces. Retails $12,500 on here. Athos Pro, 52. $7,800. Um, 15 pounds, 6 ounces. The Athos will always be the more expensive of the two versions as well. The Athos and the S-Works is 13,000. The Athos and the Pro is 78. I think the Pro in here is seven, maybe seven three. 
So you're always going to get spend more money on this Athos. I think maybe just you know because because of the way that car carbon frames they have on there. But I don't know. They're making these bikes more and more comfortable. They're making these tires more and more wider. That it might hard it might be hard to actually buy a full on dedicated endurance bike with all these future shocks of that. If you're riding like a, the Paris Bay with the cobblestones and maybe dirt and gravel roads, you're going to love that bike. But here it's so smooth and flat on everything. We don't see a lot more Roubaix on the floor on the on the road. They're more of the the Athos. They're more of the Tarmac SL7s and 28s on there. I don't know. There's these these bikes are getting such wide tires on there that that you don't really need that all that on there. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Leave it down in the comment section below. Uh, uh, that's it. Like, comment, subscribe if you want. If you don't, doesn't matter to me. Love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, here we have the Specialized Rebate S-Works size 52 with CLX Alpinist wheels on here. SRAM Red XDR free hub, or SRAM Red XDR cassette. That is just for the louder ratchet teeth on there. Same hub, same wheels, um, just a little, uh, louder ratchet. All right, guys, here we have the Specialized Athos Pro uh, with this CL Alpinist wheels on there. SRAM 4's XTR cassette. There they come free by Santos. Very quiet. All right, thank you guys.